Comrades, uh, it's been a while since we last shared ideas on issues that concern our country, that affect our community. Uh, it's because I've had quite a number of uh, engagements and challenges to attend to. However, I'm happy that today we'll find time to share ideas on a very pertinent issue that has a bearing not only on our country today, but also uh, on future generations. And this is the events that are happening in a neighboring Kenya. In Kenya, the Gen Z's have stood up to say this far and no further. Now, many commentators in Uganda and analysts, some of them very celebrated, have come to the conclusion that what is happening in Kenya cannot happen in Uganda. And it is on this that I wish uh, to share my honest opinion. In the late 1970s and early 80s, when Kenyans were faced with the brutal dictatorship, uh, the Jomo Kenyatta despotism and the Moi regime, they used to say that Ugandans will always be Ugandans. And they said this because whereas they had no means, they had failed to, you know, dislodge their despots, in Uganda, dictators were being chased every other day. And they came to believe that Ugandans had the spine to stand up to abusive power, but Kenyans were too spineless to do anything about their situation. Now, the reverse is true today. Ugandans believe that, you know, they are too powerless to do anything to those that oppress them and they envy Kenyans because the Kenyans have stood up. All the analysts today are saying what happened in Kenya cannot happen in Uganda because if anybody tried to go to the streets, it would be a bloodbath. Yes, it is true that uh, the seven dictatorship is a killer regime. But it is also true that those who, you know, are confronted with such, you know, absolute regimes must do more than anybody else, must put in a greater effort must make greater sacrifices to dislodge such a despot. So it runs, you know, it is contrary to logic to say that because we have a more brutal regime, therefore we shouldn't do anything. Or that we should be cowardly. We should be more courageous than the Kenyans. Because for them, they have a relatively lighter load to carry than us. So we, we can't make, you know, a lesser effort when we have a greater load to carry. And besides, is it really true that Ugandans are cowards? I was there in 2007 when Ugandans rose up to tear the despot that he had no right to give away Magara Forest to Meta. He killed people. 
but we went on the streets he shot and killed as many as he could by Ugandans we are determined to make their voice heard nobody told the Ugandans not to go there because he would kill them in 2009 i was there I witnessed with my own eyes Ugandans courageously rising up to defend the Kabaka's right to visit his territories and to exercise his right as a citizen to travel in this country and encumbered. I was there in 2011 when the intolerable economic situation was you know literally sweeping everybody uh, down the street and ugandans rose up during walk to work when i wasn't there when in 2021 ugandans rose up when uh Honorable Bobby White, a presidential candidate, had been, you know, unjustifiably detained. So when everybody is on the mark to preach to Ugandans how we are cowards, how it is very, very dangerous for them to come out because they will be killed, whose interest are we serving? because the reason the despot uses uh, overwhelming force and violence against citizens is to instill fear so when we profess that we are fearful whom are we helping are we helping ourselves to get rid of the despot or are we helping the despot by doing exactly what he wants it is on this point that actually you will find both the you know the apologists of the system and those that are vehemently opposed to it agreeing they all agree that if you go out you will be killed and therefore people should not try so if we don't make an effort how are we going to get rid of the despot do we ask ourselves that are we saying that therefore we should surrender to the despot and tolerate his abuses the despot has made it a habit to despise ugandans even when he goes out of the country when he is addressing international forums he tells them how you know foolish ugandans are how lazy we are and uh, you, you know he despises us everywhere i now understand why he does so because if we can preach to ourselves that we are cowards who can't do anything to him then he has every right to despise us but i believe that there are ugandans courageous ugandans who will rise up to the occasion maybe the time has not yet come but that time will come ugandans should realize that wearing cowardice as a badge of honor and going out and preaching and you know feeling good about it that you know we are cowards is the most shameful thing that a human being can do that you are too cowardly to stand up for your rights that you are too cowardly to condemn corruption that you can only write about it but you cannot do anything about it and you are happy to say that you know you can't do anything about it I think that we need a sense of shame. It's shameful for whoever is saying that. We can't be professing proudly 
that we are a country of cowards. Then why should we even be talking about the ears that the government visits on us if we are saying that we are too cowardly to do anything about it? Because the most painful kind of injustice is when one knows that they are being treated unjustly and then they you know they resolve that they are too cowardly to do anything about it you would rather suffer injustice unknowingly so fellow ugandans let us drop this mantra of ugandans are cowards because those who are saying it don't know its implications and this is what the implication is one every ugandan says that elections cannot get rid of the despot so the door of changing government at the polls has been rolled out by ugandans because they say the despot will rig two Ugandans are saying that they are too cowardly to take on the despot through civil uprising, unarmed uprising. That leaves two options. We either surrender to his despotism or fight him. Because not everybody is going to accept to be oppressed. And when you make it difficult, when the majority choose to do nothing, then the few will do whatever it takes using all means necessary to bring about change. So let us reflect on the message we are sending out. Let us not demoralize Ugandans. Let us encourage each other that together we can do something. Ugandans are courageous. They have demonstrated it numerous times. And I'm sure that they will do it once again. To all those that are making an honest effort to bring about change in this country, Without fearing the consequences, I salute you.